Picking up where we left off in the last video, I want to go ahead and look at the better way that I was talking about. And that is going to be instead of coming over here and modifying the pressure, which affects all the brushes that we see here in this particular category, we can do this on a per brush basis by choosing either the multiplier or maximum to modify. Now these guys have two different purposes and I'm gonna to explain to you what they are. And the simplest way of explaining this to you is I'm gonna come over here first and I'm gonna go ahead and modify this opacity pressure slider. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this all the way to 100. You can see that my stroke preview here changes. And what this is basically gonna say is that now that I'm pressing light, I'm gonna be getting very light pressure. And as I press harder and harder, I'm gonna be getting more and more pressure. Now, because I have the texture set to 100, you're seeing that I'm getting a strong grain interaction here. But if I set the texture down to zero, and I do the same thing, press very lightly, and then I press harder and harder, you'll see that basically I get the same idea here. The only difference is, is that one is gonna be revealing the texture as we increase the opacity, and the other is not gonna be revealing the texture. But otherwise, it's basically the same concept. Now, the important thing to understand is that we can do the exact opposite, meaning that I can take the opacity slider in a negative 100 direction. You can see that my stroke preview changes. And now what happens is as I press softly, I'm gonna be getting a large amount of opacity. And as I press harder and harder, I'm going to be reducing the opacity until I let go. So you can see that we can also have those types of effects. Now, what's important to understand about this, if I set this back to 100, which is probably where you're most likely going to leave it more often than not, and then I come back over here and I set the texture to something around 25 so that I get a mark that looks like this, where I'm going to be filling in the texture, but I'm going to be showing some of the texture at a light pressure. The idea of this is that the pressure slider that we have here is not just going to be modifying the opacity and the canvas texture as we saw in the previous video, but it's also going to be modifying the pressure response curve that affects this opacity that you see right here. So the important thing to understand about what we're gonna be doing with the multiplier and the maximum is that they're also going to be affecting the pressure response curve of this pressure-based opacity change. Now, what I mean by that is you can think of the multiplier here as the inbrush stand-in for this pressure slider that you see right here. So instead of modifying this pressure slider, which affects all the brushes, on a per brush basis, as you're working with the brush, you can change the multiplier until you get the exact response that you want for that particular brush. And then you can simply save that in the brush. And every time you choose that brush, it will have a custom pressure response curve based on the multiplier. And you never need to change this pressure slider. So what do I mean? When I come over here and I go ahead and reduce that, you're gonna see that now we're going to be seeing less of that grain filled in as we're working our way through our pressure. And if I come over and I increase that, you're gonna see that I'm gonna have more of that grain filled in as I work through my pressure response. So again, this is something that you can easily adjust right here within the individual brush and then save that out. The multiplier is going to do the exact same thing. So if I set this back to a default value of 50, which is going to basically more or less mimic the default value of pressure that we see in all the regular brushes, and I come over here and I focus on the multiplier, what we're going to see is that if I come down here and I reduce this down to something around the same thing as I got when I was at the lower pressure response for the multiplier, you're gonna see that it's going to more or less start out the same, but then we're going to kind of rapidly transition through this pressure response. The reason why is because the maximum is not just changing the maximum amount of opacity that we can get, but it's also decreasing the pressure response curve. If I increase this up, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. So we're gonna be able to go to this heavier opacity that we saw before, but what's gonna happen is we're not gonna have as much pressure response as we saw where we can go between the very light pressure and the very heavy pressure. So this is gonna be something that you would want to modify both these sliders until you get exactly the effects that you want. And you can have them set in whatever way you want, but it's important to remember that they don't just affect the opacity, they also affect the texture as well. So the idea again is that you do not want to modify the pressure, even though that's what I demonstrated in the last video. Instead of modifying the pressure, modify the multiplier and maximum. And again, the multiplier you can think of as a straight replacement for the pressure on a per brush basis. 
And the maximum is what you would use instead of the multiplier if you wanted to get the same types of opacity and grain effects, but with less of a pressure response. So again, just modify those two until you get exactly the type of brush that you want, both in terms of opacity as well as the canvas texture grain response. Now that said, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna clear this out, and we're gonna go ahead and pick up here in the next video.